Okay, uh, let's talk about a little bit of my understanding of the history of the American accent. This is unofficial, non-expert, a regurgitation of different things I've read, heard, tried to verify at different times, made this gesture, and basically also mixed in with my own views and opinions and speculations. So take that big giant disclaimer, make your own form your own opinion that this is a mix of fact, speculation, and uh, interpretation. So we had, uh, before there were colonies in America, there was this place called Britain or England, I forget at the time which one or both it was, but it was there, it's that island. And around the London area, around that whole entire area, there were a number of different accents, even back then. Again, this is all just my opinion, speculation, plus what I've read, etc., blah, blah, blah. So, some accents ended up becoming more common in certain regions. Again, regional. In fact, that's why they were separate accents, as they were regional to a certain class, or more likely a certain area. Well, some people from England went to what... Uh, was it called the New World, which is what we now call North America, and specifically the United States, and founded colonies and settled down uh, into uh, colonies. These European people, they showed up. There are already people living there, but they showed up anyway and made cities, and there was a bit of, um, uh, there was some awkward moments. So that happened, but the people from England who came came with accents. They didn't come neutral and say, well, we're in a new place. We better better make an American accent. So big question about which accents have changed more and how much and in what way. Did people start talking with an American accent when they got to America? Some people kind of think so or that it started to just evolve this way or move this way when we're talking about the more generic American accent, more similar to what I have compared to, say, a regional variety of a southern or country accent or Boston accent or some specific dialect. We're talking about that American generic accent that I'm always so obsessed with on this playlist. Well, people wonder, did that develop? And other people say, and this is what I believe, that actually what happened is that this accent is much more similar to what was a much more common accent in England at the time that people really started to go in droves and droves across the Atlantic Ocean to what uh, I'll just simply call America for short so why so then what really happened so we didn't change you change is what we say what I say to the UK that there are theories and ideas about how some upper class some uh, royalty and nobility, uh, people who were high ranking in some regard, I guess royal families, started speaking in ways that we now think of as being British accents, like generic British accents. So I'm very bad at a uh, very generic accent, but uh, honor, loyalty, a willing heart, I can ask no more than that. We were dropping those R's, instead of more, it's more. Instead of heart, it's hot. I'm not quite doing it well, and I, I won't do it well, because that's not the accent that I know best. I know the American accent, but I like the Brit this British accent also. But the idea was that this one ended up becoming more posh and proper, and therefore everyday regular people around the countryside in the cities started adopting this accent as well. And it became a more mainstream British accent to have that BBC accent. Today's news on, uh, let me try to uh, do it, uh, not quite an Oxford accent like what I think of uh, Richard Dawkins or something like. Um, and this is a recording from me, Richard Dawkins, and I will be speaking about the ancestor's tale. So it's closer to that, though, than to an American accent, certainly. So the idea is this became more widespread, but 
we still have all of these accents in England and the UK that were surely influenced by the much older accents that were much more American sounding to our ears, probably. And likewise, I'm sure we also just had a bunch of accents just evolve in their own ways independently, even of that. So they say there's a, a Liverpool accent. It's um, Liverpool. Nay. Nay, I'm afraid not. I'm from Liverpool. It's terrible. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I know that's awful. But that's the impression I'm doing. Uh, and I can't really make a big distinguishing sound between a northern accent and a west country accent. Uh, but it's the impression I get is that the west country accent around is it Devonport and Westshire, Devonshire and Devon. There's a Devon in there. And it's the west country. It's a rural area, or at least historically rural, still probably pretty darn quaint and pretty and Englishy and rural, where we get that country accent, the British country accent, that sounds not at all, not really, like what we think of as the normal British accent. Not like Harry Potter. It doesn't sound like that. Instead, it's what Hagrid has, that big lovable oaf who lives in that shack who says hello there Harry and what do we have with this accent we have hard R's hard R's are often what I emphasize as the American accent having a bunch of that many accents don't have a bunch of especially the more mainstream or BBC British accent these hard R's where they're hard even though they're after a vowel whereas in many British accents, including the generic British accent. If it's an R and it comes after a vowel sound, it's pretty much dropped and omitted altogether by American standards. It simply changes the shape of that vowel ever so slightly. So my kind of theory is that a lot of people kind of came from this sort of West country area and they brought that accent with them in that our American accent has more in common with the British British West Country accent than it does with what would eventually become the more mainstream British accent or with other regional dialectical forms. And it kind of makes sense because the West Country isn't too far from the sea, but then again, nowhere in England is that far from the sea. It's an island. It's an island. So that's just kind of my little fun theory, and I think that's interesting. I also think it's interesting that the pirate accent, you know, Arr, I be a pirate, and we are known for saying "ar." I think it's interesting that this accent is actually an affected, stylized, jazzed up version of the West Country accent. It's a British accent, believe it or not, despite being known for hard R's. In fact, even R or ARG is kind of the British, uh, the pirate catchphrase. You know, the stereotype from pirates of the, the golden age, if you of piracy. Um, it's a British accent, basically, just stylized and jazzed up. But because it had those harder R's than other British accents, I'm embedding and guessing that that's why they especially emphasize those R sounds and kind of made fun of it and therefore went R as though pirates would actually go R. But I bet the pirates didn't really go R. Just people kind of making fun of them who overheard them talking were like, man, those pirates, you know, um, or they're British. Those pirates really speak with hard R's, don't they? Yeah, that's what pirates do. They do R. All right. I'm, I'm so offensive. I'm so sorry. But you get what I'm. I'm saying here, so I just think that's interesting, and that's kind of fun to me. And uh, so basically, Americans are pirates who chilled out and came from England, and we didn't change that much, but England changed, and our accent is great. But we kind of messed it up by getting lots of different regional country accents that are kind of bad sounding. I am joking. Every American regional accent, no matter how country or southern or backwoods, is completely beautiful 
not crossing my fingers, totally serious. And all accents are beautiful, including and especially yours. Thanks for checking in with me, Michael Eldridge, at I Speak With a Perfect American Accent.